<laughs> Hello. Wow. There's lots of people waiting tonight. So let's get started. <sighs> Hope you all had a nice weekend. I had a very lazy weekend. Didn't do much. I never do much on a Saturday. And Sunday, pretty much did nothing. It was a really nice day. In fact, I got up, had a shower, put my pyjamas back on and stayed that way all day. It was a pyjama day. Never mind. So tonight, sorry, my hands, I'm, my hands are itchy tonight. So if I move them around, I apologise, but I can't help it. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk to you about stockpiling. Yes, one of my absolutely favourite things to do. I love my stockpile. I rely on my stockpile. I use my stockpile and I'm not sure that I would cope without it anymore. It's been a huge part of our lives for so long, but especially the last four years or coming up four years, it has been the mainstay of my grocery shopping, stockpiling. I get lots of questions about the stockpile. Why do I have it? How big is it? What's in it? How many of each thing do I have? How do I know what to put in it? How do I know how many of each item to stockpile? Where do I buy it all? How do I pay for it all? So many questions. So hopefully over the next couple of weeks, because yes, this is going to be an epic series. It's just going to take, it's too big to cover in one session. So it's going to have to carry over a few. Hopefully I'll explain it all to you, how it works for me and how it really does save money, time and energy and how you can get it to work for you. If you want to, if you want to stockpile, go right ahead. Now, I know a few years ago I got really narky, really, really narky, and I know that's surprising because I'm such a placid, <coughs> quiet soul and I very rarely fly off the handle and Hannah's oh, choking in the background. <laughs> but I got really narky with none other than Donald Trump. Uh, surprise, surprise. Well, that was even before he was running, even before he'd even thought of running for president. He used to do a show and I used to sit up and watch it and it was quite successful. And then out of that, he, um, I guess that really brought him to the general public's notice. And so he would do guest appearances on chat shows all the time. And he was on a particular chat show and for the life of me, it, it's gone, whatever it was. But it was a family type chat show and they were talking about, you know, saving money around the home. How could the average American, we'll use Australian, you know, find money to invest and um, was it worthwhile watching the grocery budget? You know, in America they click coupons. Here we hang out for the flyers on a Tuesday night or a Sunday night when they come up on the internet and we look for our half price bargains and you know was it worth buying two for one if, if you could get them at half price now the man floored me absolutely floored me because he came out and said that he thought stockpiling groceries investing in a grocery stockpile was just a complete and utter waste of time wowzers I almost, I almost choked on my coffee. I probably did. There was steam coming off me. Seriously, the man's a multimillionaire. I'm not sure he knows what a grocery budget is. I'm pretty sure he's forgotten his humble beginnings. And I absolutely am sure he's forgotten how hard it must have been for his mother at times to put food on the table. If you have a family... If you are a couple, if you are a single, if you are young, elderly, middle-aged, middle-aged approaching elderly, whatever, food is important and eating well is important. 
And having a grocery stockpile of food will help you do that on a budget. Now, I know Maureen's on tonight. Oh, and there's Pamela. Hello. Maureen and Pamela have seen part of my stockpile. So next time they pop over, they'll be absolutely thrilled because I did tidy it up a bit today. So it's looking a bit spiffy. Normally it's sort of just put there and I know where everything is, but it's pretty neat and tidy at the moment. And I tidied it up so that I'd make sure that I had exactly what I needed so I could talk to you about it because there's no point in me telling you one thing and doing another. That's just wrong and I won't do it. So stockpiling. <coughs> Thanks, Diana. Honestly, oh, if I could have gone, jumped through the television screen and shaken him, I think I would have. I was so frustrated to think that he would so blithely dismiss the fact that there are millions of American families struggling to put groceries on in the house and food on the table. And he thought that, you know, wasting time clipping coupons, building a small stockpile was just useless. He didn't consider it an investment. I absolutely consider my stockpile an investment. It is the number one investment in our house. In fact, it is probably the only investment we make because we don't buy stocks. What about me? Oh, Hannah's an investment, yeah. We do invest in Hannah. You get free haircuts. I do well, get free haircuts, same. yeah. Um, she is, she's worth it. Um, we don't do stocks or anything like that. We don't invest our money. We consider that a gamble and we don't gamble. That's another topic. But putting the money I have and being wise with the money I have to do the grocery shopping and building a stockpile that will see us through tough times because if you've heard our story or gone back and watched, you know, what to do when disaster strikes, you'll know that we had some pretty tough times for quite a long while and food was sometimes not as um, plentiful as it is now. We never went hungry, but it may not have been as plentiful as it is now. And being able to go to the pantry and know I had it basics there was such a blessing to us. So <laughs> who's beaming? Hannah did give me my hair. Sorry. Um, Alicia B wants to know if Hannah did my haircut. She always does my haircuts now. She's my resident hairdresser and she does do a good job, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. Price is right too. Especially you don't scare <laughs> So, okay, we've got some new subscribers. That's pretty good. All right. Kerry says she has her freezer and pantry listed separately on their insurance. Yes great idea and I have allowed in our contents insurance for the contents of freezers and sure. pantry or stockpile because it's it's worth a small fortune Didn't know they would replace food. and well they don't replace the food darling they, they the give the money um, so it's worthwhile looking into if you have a, a large stockpile I stockpile for 12 months so at any given time we have 12 months supply of our basic groceries, toiletries, cleaning supplies, and usually between three to six months worth of meat and veggies in the freezer. And that's only because that's all I can fit in the freezers and I'm not allowed to have any more. I've been banned from collecting freezers. So that's, you know, what we do. My stockpile is, it sounds big, but it's not that big. 12 months worth of food stacks up very nicely in our laundry. The cleaning supplies are in the laundry. Toiletries go in both bathrooms. And the bulky stuff like toilet paper, that sort of thing, I keep outside in my shed. So it's not... Um, not a huge amount. Now, we don't have pets, so we don't need to stockpile pet food. And we do eat 
simply and from ingredients. So most of the stockpile is ingredients. I think I've covered that before with things I don't buy, but you'll, you'll find flowers and sugars, coconut, herbs and spices, um, pasta, rice, that sort of thing, oats, loads of oats at the moment. Um, wheat, bix and all bran are the cereals that I buy. I don't buy rices any longer because nobody eats them. I used to buy them all the time. Nobody eats them anymore. So if I want um, LCM bars or a marshmallow bubble slice or something, I have to specifically buy a box of rices. Otherwise, they're there. In the tin line, tomato soup, baked beans, pineapple beetroot and cream of chicken, cream of celery or cream of mushroom soups. Tuna and for camping, I buy those um, harvest stews, you know, the Irish stew or the lamb and veggies um, in the tin. When they're on half price, they're about $2.10, $2.05, I think, on half price. They're great for camping because they go really well in jackals. Otherwise, there's not a lot of tinned products, tinned fruit sometimes. If I can get it cheaply enough, then that will be two fruits is usually the cheapest or peaches we love apricots pears if i can get it cheaply enough then i will get tinned fruit but otherwise not a lot did you mention the tinned spaghetti oh, i have to mention tinned spaghetti yeah i usually keep about um 12 to 18 tins of spaghetti for flossie because that's her favorite jaffle filling tin spaghetti okay. and i just buy the aldi one it's quite nice. Last for ages. Now, tin foods are really good to stockpile because they last forever. Anyway. Oh, pressure canner. Kerry has a pressure canner. Oh, I have I am green. Am I going green? I'm green with envy. Love. I would love a pressure canner. Anyway, so to get back to stockpiling. Why would you stockpile? We'll start with the why. You would stockpile to save money because you will stockpile things that you can get cheaply. You stockpile for bad times. Now, bad times don't necessarily have to be unemployment. It could be that you are sick for a week with the flu, so sick you can't go out. If you have nothing in the house to eat, it means you're going to resort to takeaway, home delivery, send someone else to the supermarket and know that you'll triple your bill. So that sort of thing. It could be that you have a new baby and you just don't want to go out. It could be a weather event. Don't you love that term, weather event? A weather event as in cyclones, hurricanes, floods. You could be snowed in. You could be, you know, flooded in. There were times when we were flooded in and couldn't get out. Um, back in the day. So those sorts of things, having a stockpile means that you don't have to worry about going hungry, not being able to feed your family. What do you stockpile? That will depend very much on what you eat and how you cook. I stockpile mostly ingredients. Most of it will be flour, rice, um, oats, pasta, herbs and spices, icing sugar. I buy icing sugar. Crackers, and sometimes I make them, but seriously, making crackers for me is just fiddly and not worth not worth my time. So it has to be special for me to make crackers. So I buy crackers. Having yeast so I can make bread, dried fruits so we can do fruit cakes or puddings that sort of thing, jams, sauces, as in pasta sauces, tomato sauce, passata, tin soups, those sorts of things, pineapple and beetroot always because we don't have a salad without pineapple or beetroot. It's just not a salad without. They are the things that I stockpile. Then if I have room in the budget, it will be things like, um, coleslaw dressing because I like the Zush coleslaw dressing or the Kraft coleslaw dressing. So if there's room in the budget and it's on half price, I will buy some 
to use through the year. Tea and coffee always. Last week, Woolworths had my tea on half price, so I bought some more and I have enough tea now for 15 months in the stockpile. I buy coffee in the big tins when it comes on sale. Wayne likes the Nescafe instant coffee. He has one cup in the morning and one in the afternoon. So it's not a great expense. So when that comes on sale, I will buy one or two tins. We go through about three tins a year, I figured, with his one or two cups a day and that's enough to cover visitors too if they like instant coffee. When Aldi have the coffee pods on um, their special buys in the packs, the bulk packs, then and if it's my flavour that I like, then I will buy two or three of the packs and that should be enough to get me through a couple of months. Those sorts of things are important. And coffee and tea are probably the only really brand type groceries we buy. Not a lot. Yeah, okay. Who's gone hospital volunteering? Right. Trisha. Is it Trisha? Trisha? Yep. Okay. See you when you get back. Um, okay. Shopping bags out of chocolate bags. Did you track your groceries to know how much you use in one year or did you work it out from grocery list? Okay, Jules, I'll get to that in just a moment because it's part of what's coming up. Uh, how do you keep bugs out of your flowers? Okay. How do you keep bugs out of your flowers? Question. Mm -hmm. Freeze it. Outback six. Outback six. Okay. When flour or dried fruits, cereals, pastas, when I bring them into the house, I put them into the freezer. Now, the recommended is a minimum of five days. I just put them in the freezer until I'm ready to unpack them either into a canister or into onto the shelves. So sometimes they're there for weeks. Depends on what I'm up to when I do them. But freezing will kill any eggs from weevils that are in your dry goods. The other thing you can do is make sure all your containers are scrupulously clean. And that means before you refill your flour canister, wash it in hot, so hot soapy water. And make sure it is thoroughly dry. Sit it out in the sun if you can for an hour or so to dry before you refill it. And do that with all your canisters all the time. So I never just get the flower canister and top it straight back up. Wait till it's empty, wash it, dry it, then top it back up. And when I'm doing my spring cleaning, I empty all the pantry shelves, wash all the walls, wash all the shelves, get in underneath and do the... Um, bits that they rest on, wipe them all out and sprinkle bay leaves around and then put everything back. So we have had, I have had weevils in the pantry and I have had one issue of terrible bout of pantry moths that nearly drove me demented. But I won. I fought the battle and I won. I persevered and kept making sure everything was clean and I put as much as I could in the freezer and that's the only way I know of to absolutely keep weevils and things out by just not letting them get a hold in the first place. Now, Jules, how do you know how much you're going to need? Last week we talked about price books and you're going to rely heavily on your price book you're going to rely heavily on your shopping lists. What I discovered way back when was most of the time I was buying the same things over and over. It was just the odd things that we didn't use a lot of all the time, like cinnamon or ginger or perhaps um, bug spray or, or something like that that were the odd ring-in things, so to speak, for the shopping list. Most of the stuff was fairly regular on my shopping lists. When I switched to monthly shopping, it became even more obvious. And monthly shopping gave me the quantities we used each month. So it would be two packets of wheat bix, four packets of pasta, 
eight tins of tomato soup, two kilos of sugar, eight kilos of self-raising flour, whatever, 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 you know, four things of um, butter, that sort of thing. And from that, I was actually able to work out a three-month, because I didn't start off with a 12-month supply, a three-month stockpile. And once I built up to that three months, I stuck at that for a little while and um, refined the list, so to speak, because some things are seasonal. So salad things for us, like the pineapple and the beetroot, are summer. We don't use as much in winter. So you need to, um, I carried it over, worked out, you know, for the one or two salads we'd have a week in winter, didn't need to buy as much and carried it through. Once I had three months down, then I moved to building a six-month stockpile and I had it at six months for ages, for oh, years, years and years and years. And it worked really well. It just, you know, just rotated through. It meant the shopping was just topping up, which is still what my shopping is. It's pretty much topping up and was brilliant. It makes things so easy. It makes budgeting very easy. And it's very reassuring to know that you can just go to the stockpile and get what you need when you need it. You don't have to go to the supermarket. You don't have to worry about whether it's on sale or not. You figure it out. Then about three, four years ago, we had a bit of a hiccup and things were going to be a bit tight for 12 months. We knew it was just for 12 months, but we had to go back to a, a very strict grocery budget. So I had four months before that happened. And in that four months, I scoured the sale flyers, I hunted discounts everywhere I could and built up our grocery stockpile for 12 months so that we had 12 months worth of groceries. So pretty much for the next 12 months, all I bought was milk, um, the fruit and veg that we needed, sometimes cream if we we're feeling extravagant and bread the occasional loaf of bread otherwise we lived off the stockpile and it was interesting because we I had worked it out pretty well we ran out of tomato soup and there was something else we ran out of can you remember no baked beans, baked beans. tomato soup and baked beans otherwise everything else I had worked out to the nth degree so to speak for what we needed for that 12 months oh, I gave myself a pat on the back it was a relief to get to the end of that 12 months but it also meant because we had lived off the stockpile for that long that it that it was low it was really really low and so then I had to rebuild it so I was starting from scratch just like probably most of you will be starting from scratch and so I had to go again with my lists, work out what we needed, the quantities we needed. I was able to boost the tomato soup and the baked beans. And slowly, over the next six months, I built up to another 12 months supply and I've maintained it at that. Now, I'm not suggesting anyone race out and buy one month, three months, six months, 12 months supply of anything because if you've got the money to do that and you want to go right ahead we didn't have the money to do that didn't have the cash to do that I had to wait and see so I had my lists and that's when I absolutely love going on the um, supermarket websites and deciding which half price items I'd be buying and stocking up on if they were cheaper than the Aldi equivalent if they weren't cheaper than the Aldi equivalent I just bought it from Aldi. It works, you know. Um, I did go to Costco a couple of times trying to get prices because Costco really annoys me. They don't put prices on their website. Honestly, they weren't any cheaper and in a few instances they were actually did actually work out to be more expensive. So 
I ditched Costco. Excuse me, I need a drink. Okay, so building your stockpile will take time. It's not a it's not an overnight instant one trip to the grocery store type thing. And you also need to decide whether you're going to stockpile all your needs or just food needs or perhaps just toiletries or cleaning products. Now, it's easy for me to stockpile the cleaning products because I use laundry soap, borax, washing soda, vinegar and eucalyptus oil. Pretty much it. So they're quite, oh, dishwasher powder and dishwashing detergent. But I have enough of those under the kitchen sink for two years, so I don't need to buy more for a while. Those things, like the washing, the washing soda, the borax, the um, laundry soap, are just generic brands. Um, they don't come on sale very often. In fact, I don't think any of them have ever been on sale when I've been buying them. So I just buy enough for what I need. And that's it. Eucalyptus oil regularly comes on sale. Now, if you're just buying a small bottle, I think Aldi at the moment is the cheapest for eucalyptus oil. And it is pure and it is Australian. Otherwise, I buy it from uh, Basistos when they have a good sale. Now, last time they had a good sale, it was 50% off on the four litre, great big, huge four litre um, bottle. And I bought it and shared it with some friends. We split the cost between us and we had a litre each. And a litre of eucalyptus oil is a lot of eucalyptus oil. It lasts a long time. So that's another way to buy it that's inexpensive. You can sign up for their newsletter and they will send it to you. Now, I think it's um, Thursday Plantation. Thursday Plantation has a similar deal occasionally, you can um, sign up for their newsletters too and they'll let you know when it's on sale. So, Julian Rod. Yeah. Bozistos, B-O-S-I-S-T-O-S, -S -S, Karen T. Um, you can buy their products at the supermarket, but... I think it's just bazistos.com.au. Um, Google it anyway. And they do online sales. So you can order online from them if you want to. They also have um, their lavender oil is quite nice, as is their tea tree oil. So just a little thing. And sometimes, sometimes they have specials for new subscribers. So have a look if you're not in a hurry for it, it might pay to wait for a while before ordering if you're going to look for a good sale right now where was i um cleaning products so there that's the sum total of the cleaning products that i have in the house there's not a lot as in individual products thank goodness because did anyone see the choice um segment on channel seven i think it was last week about all the different cleaning products and how usually microfiber cloth and water was just as good goes in girl who'd have thunk it hey why spend six dollars on a bottle of toilet cleaner when you don't need to anyway for toiletries i have um shampoo conditioner hairspray toothpaste toothbrushes, mouthwash, soap, shaving cream for Wayne, and razors. Deodorant. Now, sorry? Deodorant. Um, deodorant, yes. Um, speaking of deodorants, Victorian watches, viewers, cheapskaters, um, NQR has Dove roll-on deodorants for a dollar this week. So if you like Dove, and they seem to have quite a few different fragrances or whatever they called in deodorants, so well worth looking at because um, that's 
well, that is well and truly a stock up price. So they're the toiletries we have. And I wait for half price sales for all of those things. That was Thomas, if anyone heard that giggle in the background. Um, uh, you can make, Karen, too, yes, you can make mouthwash. Um, but really, if you want to, just use salt water. Just salty water. Half a teaspoon of salt in a glass of water and swish it round should do the job. You can add a few drops of peppermint, peppermint oil if you want to. But, yeah. Um, on mouthwash, the Aldi mouthwash is quite cheap. In fact, it's about half the price of Listerine and the added advantage is it doesn't have sugar in it. Listerine actually has sugar in it. Why would you have a mouthwash? Mouth wash? That's a mouthful. A mouthwash with sugar in it. Kind of defeats the purpose. Okay. There you go. Queenslanders, Chemist Warehouse have dove deodorants for $1.95. Thanks, Barb. So with the toiletries... Um, of course, there's mine and there's Wayne's and then there's the stuff I put in the kids' bathroom. The boys aren't too fussed with what they put through their hair as long as it makes bubbles, they're happy. So often you will find, stop sniggering at your brothers, often you will find that um, Woolworths, Coles, Big W, Kmart, Chemist Warehouse, Priceline will have the... Um, Shampoos and conditioners for a dollar. When they when they are that price, I will buy enough to bring us back up to the twelve month supply. Um, ditto the soaps, although I make soap, so I don't often buy it. But I do like the Dove beauty bars. Not that it works, but anyway, they actually smell nice in the linen cupboard. So when I get those for um, 95 cents or 85 cents I will buy 12 of them and put them in the linen cupboard to between the towels and the sheets smell really nice until I'm ready to use them okay yes Kerry wasn't it a shame Kerry says when Avon closed down she stopped up on their shampoos conditioners body washes deodorants yes what a shame avon's gone they were so good expensive, they were a tad expensive but their specials were still good and they did have a really good aluminium free deodorant um karen t can i do a show on soap making maybe <laughs> i'll have to think about it <laughs> <laughs> it's not nearly as hard as it sounds, trust me. Okay, so, all right, sorry, folks, I'm getting sidetracked and I don't mean to with the stockpiling. Carry <laughs> um, Finding somewhere to keep it, and I think it was back up Lorraine, Lorraine for, a single for a single person, whether it's a single person or a family, a couple, no, a share house, I think would be the worst because you just about have to put it in a locked safe. But there's, um, look, find places to keep it. Now, for a single person, obviously, you won't need nearly as much as a family would. So I, the same rules apply, though. Track what you buy and make a note of the quantities over, over a month and then over three months, and that will give you a guide of, how much you need to have in your stockpile for a three-month stockpile. And then when those things come on half price sale, buy up so that you're effectively doubling your money. And that's what we want to do because you don't want your stockpile to cost you money. That defeats the purpose. It's meant to save you money and save you stress. So I'd start with things that you use a lot of and use regularly, and it might be baked beans. So if you only use the little tins of baked beans, when they come on half price at Coles or Woolworths and they're often during winter, they're, the little four packs are half price, I think they're around $2 for four, then 
buy two of them and you've got eight tins of baked beans and you build your stockpile from there. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, because it, it's not meant to cost you money. So when you're doing your shopping, you're being a little more savvy with what you buy and how you buy it. So it might mean that you put off buying something this week because it's not on sale when you know that because you've got your price book and you've been tracking the sales cycles, you know it's due to come on sale somewhere else in the next couple of weeks. It's not urgent. You can wait to buy it and double your money. Yeah. Is making your own sweet cheaper than buying the Aldi soap? Okay. Okay, no. Making your own soap isn't cheaper. What is better about it is you control what goes into it. So you know the oils that go into it. Um, if you're going to fragrance it, you know the fragrance that you put into it. If you're going to colour it, I don't colour my soaps. I don't see the point. They look all right. Although if you're using olive oil, it tends to go a bit greenish, but that's okay. You know, making soap is something that you do. I have an itchy nose tonight. Sorry, folks. Um, making soap is something that you do because you want a nice soap. You want a soap that's gentle, that's made to suit your skin type and your lifestyle. Uh, you can do all sorts of soaps. So you can do some that lather up really well and are quite rich for dry skins. You can do some that are exfoliating. You can do the really strong soaps for um, people that do hard physical work and perhaps have a lot of perspiration um, build up in their skin and really need something to clean it up and get rid of it. The hair must be lingering from... Sunday, it feels like I've got spider webs on my face. So for soap making, it's not necessarily more expensive, but it's not necessarily cheaper either. You don't need a lot of fancy equipment to make soap. So maybe I will do a, a soap video for you because seriously, um, it's it's not nearly as difficult. I've shown um, Pamela G and Maureen have been here when we've been making soap and I think both of them have tried it since then. So it's not that difficult at all. Okay. Now. All right. Oh, I've got itchy nose now. Good idea, Maureen. Okay. Priya, okay, so Priya, someone asked the question, um, I think it was Karen T, about making mouthwash, and Priya has just answered that she uses cardamom pods as a mouthwash. Are they hard to find? Would you need to find them? If you could answer down the bottom, that'd be really thank, I'd be grateful, Priya. You'd have to get them from a, an Asian grocer, I would expect. I don't think I'd find them in the supermarket, would I? I don't know if they are. And would they be terribly expensive? I'd be really interested to know. Cardamom's a spice. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So Lorraine says her unit's very small and space is at a premium. Think about how you stack things. Now, when I do my stockpile shopping... I usually take the whole tray. So it'll be the whole tray of soup or the whole tray of beans, the whole tray of whatever, um, tuna, whatever. If it's spaghetti, I take the whole box and I just slide those straight onto the shelves and stack them up. So on my shelves, I can do four trays across and three deep. That's why it's like a supermarket. And it is why it's like a supermarket. Did that just realise? Did you just realise that? <laughs> um, now, I do that because they stack neatly. And the, the cardboard trays, the supermarket's just going to throw them away. So might as well just pull them out, pop them in the trolley and buy them. Now, the other thing I do is if I've got four trays of tomato soup, I stack them in the trolley. I take one out and sit it in the baby seat. 
when I'm going through the register, I hold up the one tin and I just say to him, I have 48 of those. He looks in the trolley, cuts them up. So I'm not loading and unloading all the time either. And that works at Aldi, Coles and Woolworths. So nobody questions it. It's just what I do. Ditto things in packets like the pasta. I will buy the box of pasta. I know that we need um, 24 500-gram packets of spaghetti a year. So I just buy, take the box and say, that's it. That's how many I have. 12 packets of noodles do the same thing. That's what that, that's, I just do it like that. So John H says Aldi has farmer dinner. Cardamom pods. Aldi does. Thank you. Hi, Judy. Okay. Um, yes, Maureen wants to know if she can freeze Elaine's Easy Pastry. Yes, you can. Um, yes, you can. It also tastes good raw. It also tastes good raw. Who said that? I did. Hannah eats it raw. Well, there you go. Get it from you. Mm, Melissa K. Toothpaste. Yes, toothpaste when it comes on half price. Now, the trick with toothpaste is it does actually go off over time. So don't stockpile too much. And then watch your unit price. Get your price book out and check the unit price because even though it's marked as a sale, because it will be a slightly different size tube, the unit price isn't always cheaper than the regular price. Very annoying, but because you've already got your price book with your unit prices listed, easy for you to figure out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Four litres for ten dollars. What's four litres for ten dollars? Uh, so, don't know if it was a mistake or she originally said forty litres for ten dollars. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, mouse baits don't have mice, but do you know what white toothpaste is really good for cleaning shoes, cleaning joggers, runners. It also gets rid of blackheads. And it also gets rid of blackheads. There you go. How does that work, sweet pea? I'm not. But it burns when you do it, but it works. Okay, so you just smear it on. Yeah. And leave it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Leave it for 10 minutes and wipe it off. And there you go. Goes. White toothpaste, smear it over a blackhead, leave it for 10 minutes, then wash it up. Well, it's gone. It's gone. It is painful. Hannah says it burns. I think it's because it's in the eyes. Oh, the fumes in your eyes, yes, probably. Okay. 40 litres of laundry liquid for $10. Yes. Okay. Is that the gloop? what everyone calls gloop or glump or whatever it is, that's the stuff I used to do um, before I made the powder, the stuff the boys used to like getting into in the laundry. <laughs> it was goop. It was like a gel. It was really good. Okay. So back to stockpiling. We've covered groceries, toiletries, cleaning okay you can stockpile your garden needs so things like seeds um rose food white oil that sort of thing are easy to stockpile too i keep my seeds in paper envelopes and then i have them in a black bag and then it goes into a tub i'm just a bit paranoid about um birds or mice or something getting into them so i do them up as best I can to keep them out. Thanks, Priya. Okay. So cardamom from Asian Grocers or Aldi has it. There you go. If you have an Aldi and you want to try the cardamom for mouthwash, do you crunch it? Sorry, I'm full of questions tonight. I know. You should be asking the questions. Um, do you crunch it? Chew it up. Hmm. I'm interested. I'm. I'm going to have to Google this. This is. This is. Um. Has me fascinated now. All right. So, back to stockpiling. Where do you buy your groceries? Aldi, Woolworths, Coles, Asian grocers, Indian grocers. 
I've already mentioned to you a few times, I get my herbs and spices from Hindustan in bulk. So that's a once a month shopping trip, shopping order over once to Hindustan month. once a year, sorry. Must be getting late. Um, once a year shopping trip to Hindustan to buy my herbs and spices. And again, I know roughly how much of each thing we'll use through the year. So I know whether to buy 200 grams, 500 grams, a kilo, whatever it is. Bring them home, pop them into the jars, put them in the cupboard. I'm good for another year. Um, Hindustan does orders online if you're interested. I have no affiliation with them other than that's where I shop for my herbs and spices. Um, so they're just in Greens Road, Dandenong. Easy to get to, easy to find, lovely people, and it smells really good. You walk through the door and it's just so exotic. It's amazing. I love going there. All right. So those things, dried fruits. Okay. Dried fruits. Hindustan or Aldi for my dried fruits. Usually Aldi have their dried fruits starting around mid-September to early October for Christmas baking. And for the last couple of years, they've had the cheapest dried mixed fruit around at $4.95 a kilo. So I stock up and buy enough for the Christmas baking and then my baking through the year. I buy glacé cherries and glacé ginger from Hindustan. I buy sultanas from Aldi. Currants came from Al uh, Coles. Currants from Coles. Mixed peel. We don't use a lot of it because nobody but me likes it. I like peeling things. So I only have a couple of packets each year and they usually come from Coles. And I will usually buy those to boost my flywise points so that I can get a bonus whatever. Otherwise, there's apricots and prunes are the only other dried fruits that we have. And they all go into the freezer too when they come home, straight into the freezer. Now, they can stay in the freezer indefinitely if you want to and just take them out to use them, pop them back in. They're fine. Um, but they too go into the freezer uh, until they're ready to go into canisters in the pantry. Um, oh, gosh. Yeah, Royal Nut Company, Kerry is Royal Nut Company, the place in Knoxfield? Or is that that's True Taste Nuts in Knoxfield? Anyway, okay. Okay. No, Margaret, no, the fruit does not spoil after coming out of the fruit. It doesn't actually freeze solid because it's mm, sugary and dried and, you know, dried fruits are quite sugary. It doesn't freeze rock solid. It's just enough so that if there's any little creepy crawlies in there, the freezer just knocks them protein. out <laughs> and, yeah, it just adds protein to the fruit. Um it's just a thing that I do with them. But, no, they're fine to bring out of the freezer and use, and I just use it straight away. Um, ah, thank you, Karen T. Kellett's Road. That's for the Royal Nut. Oh, I know where they are now. Yes, Royal Nuts. Yes, I know. And then there's True Taste in Lewis Road, um, Knoxfield. In Stockholm's Yarn. Yarn, yes. Oh, I stockpile card making supplies and Christmas, decorations. and Christmas decorations and fabric. That's a whole different. That's a whole different show, Eve. <laughs> it, it, it's a nice thing to have, but it's a whole different show. Okay. Um. Right. Okay, uh, the, the smell, Julie says, the smell of herbs and spices gets into your skin and clothes. Yes, it does if you let it, if you're around them a lot. Mm, okay.
Cool. Thank you, Priya, for explaining how to use the cardamom pods. I'm going to try that. You're welcome to. See how it goes. I'll see how it goes. All right. So what are we covered? The why? Not just to save money, but to get you through hard times or when you're sick, it, it's a fallback. It's a it's a wise investment. And if you can buy two for one, you've doubled your money. There's nowhere on the stock market you can double your money instantly like that. But that's when you buy four. You'll start your stock. Right? And yes, and that's when you buy four and start your stockpile. That's exactly right. So night, Barbara. I hope you feel better soon. All right. Ah, oh, toothpaste is good for burns in the kitchen. I've heard that. Yeah. Mm. Hannah's heard it. I haven't. That's all right. Um, back to stockpiling. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. Um, all right. So, the where, wherever you shop that's cheapest. And with your stockpile, you may find that you do have to shop around. But if you're only doing it every month or every three months or every six months or every 12 months, then it's not such a big deal. When I was building the stockpile for the 12 months and then restocking, I broke the shopping down and I did it between because it suited me at this time to do it between Christmas and New Year. That's when the supermarkets were actually really, really quiet. The rest of the shopping centres were crazy with people doing sales, but the actual supermarkets were quite quiet. So I could go and I had my shopping list broken down and I would do the cleaning um, stockpile one day, the toiletry stockpile another day, the baking stockpile another day the tins another day i broke it down and it was easy to just go and do it bring it home and put it away it wasn't a massive have to hire a semi-trailer to bring it all home and then spend a week putting it away sort of job because that would be overwhelming <laughs> for me anyway i don't think i could cope with doing that but when it's broken down into small chunks and you just do you know 15 or 20 minutes and it's done, it's quite easy and achievable. It's not scary. Wow, Eve, three, they have got the three, Eve has the three majors in her, will have on Thursday, the three major supermarkets in the one shopping centre. Whoa, expect bargains galore. They will be price watching each other like crazy. So the specials you will find in those stores won't be advertised. They will be manager specials or store specials and they will change probably daily, especially between Coles and Woolworths. So, you know, zoom in, check your prices, zip into the other store, check the prices and buy whichever's cheapest. Yeah. Don't find it overwhelming, Kylie. Start small. If you shop weekly, aim to build a two-weekly stock stockpile. It might take you a month to do that, but then you've got a week off. Then build it up to a month's supply of everything. And once you've done that, sit for a couple of months. Let it um, mm -hmm. just do your monthly shopping, restocking your, what you've used, and think about what you need for three months and then start building so you've got a three-month stockpile. Now, you don't have to stockpile absolutely everything you use just because I'm the weird member of the family that does that. You don't have to. You might just prefer to have a stockpile of things that you commonly use like tea, coffee, um, Vegemite and peanut butter. And you might just like to have those, enough of those on the shelf to last you for a month or three months or whatever. Build those stockpiles. Choose, choose what you want to stockpile. Choose what you will use the most often that will give you the best benefit. 
but just baby steps. You won't do it all at once and don't even try to do it all at once. You just, it will just knock you flat and you'll never want to do it again. So this week, peanut butter's on sale somewhere. I can't remember where, but I've seen it. Peanut butter's on sale. So if you've got peanut butter on your shopping list this week, buy two instead of the one. And if you've got a bit of grocery money left over, you might buy another two. And that will give you four peanut butters to put in your, to start your stockpile. Start it small, work like that. Or look for something else that's on half price that you use regularly this week. If it's on your shopping list, buy two if you've got a bit of wriggle room in the grocery budget, buy a couple more and start your stockpile with it that way. Um, I have no idea. Okay. All right. Sorry, folks. Just what I'm following the where the Woolworths is opening. Caroline Springs, a bit too far for me to go, isn't it? Mm, never mind. Well, okay. Then, mate. Yeah. All right. So, who was talking about? Um, I've lost it. I've lost it. Sorry. Okay, Kylie. Sorry, Kylie. I had to find your name again. It went right out of my head. So start like that. It might be that you only have a small stockpile of one backup of everything. That's fine. If that's what works for you, that's that's what you need to do. If you know that you've got one in the pantry and one in the stockpile and you're happy with that, then that's right. And as soon as you take the one from the stockpile, you replace it the next shopping trip or the next time it's on half price work it like that it's um, your stockpile will be individual to you so that's why when people ask me what's in my stockpile and how many of each thing I have and where do I buy it I can tell them and I can show them the list and they're on the website and on my blog if you want to go and have a look for them they are there but that's that's what we use and what suits us so if you don't eat what we eat and drink what we drink, if you don't cook the way I cook and use the ingredients and foods that I cook, then that's totally irrelevant to you. If your family is not the same size as mine, if you don't have the number of visitors that we have, if you um, live in a different area and so your meals are more salads than casseroles or more or the reverse you know more casseroles than salads if you don't bake then your stockpile is going to be very different to mine each stockpile is unique to that person or to that family and that's the way it should be because none of us are the same when none of us are exactly the same and do exactly the same thing we all have the same goal we just have different ways of getting there and different um, methods of achieving it which is what I just said isn't it different ways of getting there blah, blah, blah. but so start small one or two things but you really need to know what you want to buy and what you want to use look I've known people who've set aside a half a shelf in their wardrobe to start this stockpile I know another lady who used a styrofoam broccoli box from the greengrocer to start her stockpile. It was just somewhere that she could put her things in. It sat on the floor in her laundry and she would just put things in there as she bought them, take them out, replace them, and she went on from there. So you don't need shelves everywhere. You don't need boxes everywhere. You don't need to build a shed. I would be really nice if we had a basement. Oh, it'd be my dream to have a basement Ooh, and line it cellar. and yeah, a wine cellar. <laughs> dream. Go away. Um, 
a basement. I would love to have a basement. I could just, in my imagination, there's shelves and rows and benches. I and can dig you a hole. It would just be amazing. You're digging yourself a hole. <laughs> Cheeky. would just be amazing. But we don't have a basement. And we don't have basements generally in Australia. So it's a bit of a pipe dream. But it would be nice, wouldn't it? Okay. I'm getting the wind up. Cooking oil, okay, if you're going to stockpile oil, Priya stockpiles cooking oil. If you're going to stockpile oil, tins are better than glass, which is better than plastic, okay. Your oils need to be kept cool and dark or they will go rancid. So, and they go off quite quickly once they're opened. So, if you don't use a lot of oil, by all means, stockpile a couple of bottles, but just smaller bottles. Don't go buying the four-litre tins or the four-litre plastic bottles if you only use a drizzle once a month because it won't last. And that's the other thing with your stockpiling. Sorry, folks, I was about to wind up. That's the other thing with your stockpiling. Just make sure that you keep enough that will stay good or usable in the time that you can you stop that in the time that you can use it up. <laughs> Hannah's over there pretending to play the piano and I can see it out of the corner of my eye. I'm so sorry. That's just terrible. Okay. <laughs> She's going, duh, duh, duh. She's going duh, 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 duh. <laughs> and it's out of the corner of my eye. Sorry, folks. <sighs> Maureen has a craft room. I'm envious. Under beds is a great place to stash stuff. I actually, in our wardrobe at the moment, have a little tub that has 20 blocks of chocolate in it. <laughs> because when IGA had the, the Cadbury's chocolate for um, 90 cents, 100 grams, um, a couple of weeks ago, we fought a lady for it. We did just about fight a lady for it. I ended up giving her one block. I had it first just because she put it back and walked away, so I took it. Then she came back and it was gone and you should have seen the look she gave me. But anyway, she was a lovely lady, so I gave it back to her. And then um, Woolworths had the lint chocolate for half price last week. So I now have a lot of chocolate stashed in a box in my wardrobe. Now, why is it in my wardrobe? Because you it. So that the boys don't find it need it. And because it's the coolest room in the house, our wardrobe. Our wardrobe is right smack bang in the middle of the house. There's no external walls at all with it. So it's actually the coolest room in the house. So that's where the chocolate stays. <laughs> yeah. I agree with Karen. Um, toilet paper. Karen T. Toilet paper? Yes. Um, okay. Is that the cheapest? Which is the cheapest? Aldi is the cheapest. The Aldi Confidence is the cheapest toilet paper. I don't have a problem with it. Lots of people do. It is absolutely the cheapest toilet paper. Um, ends up in the same place. Sorry? Ends up in the same place. As Hannah says, it ends up in the same place. I always say just think about what you do with it. You are flushing money down the sewer. So <laughs> what diet, Kerry? Um, so toilet paper... I buy and it goes out into the shed and I bring it in a packet at a time and it stays in the laundry so that we can refill the toilet rolls in the bathrooms. Um, yes. Right. Okay. So, Lorraine, don't be overwhelmed. Right. Okay. Stockpiling seems like such a massive job but you're only doing it one step at a time if you hear snoring Hannah's gone to sleep um do baby steps folks just one little bit at a time start off with um working out what you need and what you use the most of and then perhaps from that the most expensive so that you can find those on half price and buy those so you'll save a bit more and work from there but don't be overwhelmed one step at a time 
one grocery item at a time, one shopping trip at a time, and you will get there. It, it won't happen quickly. Building, building a good and usable stockpile takes time. So if you're impatient, then by all means, withdraw $3,000 from the bank and run down the street and do your grocery shopping and then come home and try and put it away. It, it won't work, folks. It's too hard and too overwhelming. Just do it bit by bit as you have the time, as you have the money and as the grocery specials come up and that you will get there. So anyway, next week I'll move on and explain a bit more about it. <laughs> she is a tease a terrible tease and when I see her out of the corner of my eye doing things you've got no idea so next week we'll do stockpiling 101 part two and move on a bit more and by then I should have tidied the rest of the shelves and I'll actually be able to show them to you because I can't show them to you at the mess they are Wendy Wendy and Maureen and Pamela have seen them and Joy's seen them but no I just can't, no, you'll think I'm a terrible slob and I'm not really, I'm just a bit untidy sometimes. Anyway, I'm going to go, we've gone over our hour, I've been getting the, and the signs, and now she's like this, so I will go, I will see you on Thursday night in the kitchen, and I might make something, oh no, Thursday night, folks, TVP. There you go. I'll leave you with that. TVP. Now she's holding her head in her hands. <laughs> it's not that bad. TVP, how to use it, why you use it, how it can save you money. There you go. All right. I'll see you on um, Thursday. Thank you all for joining us. And I shall say bye. Bye.